three new blur options available in Photoshop CS6 are Field Blur, Iris Blur, and Tilt Shift. In the past, you would have had to do some fancy footwork with some masks and some other adjustment layers to get these effects to happen, so this is pretty exciting stuff. We'll start with talking about Field Blur. You can access each of the new blur options through the Filter menu, and they're at the top in a grouping of the blur options. So selecting Field Blur, the first thing that you'll see is what's called a pin in the center of your image. You can move the pin to a new position. So for instance, I might want to make sure that my airplane stays in focus. You can adjust the amount of focus by clicking on this white black marker here. Dragging upwards will reduce the blur. Dragging downwards and around clockwise will increase the blur. So in this case, I want to make sure the nose of this airplane stays in effect nice and sharp. I can add as many pins as I like to my document. So I might also place a pin here. So I'd like that part of the plane to stay sharp. I'd like to put a pin here. I want that part of the plane to stay sharp. I basically want the whole airplane here to stay sharp. To reposition a pin, you would just click on the center point and drag it into its new position. So now I've set the areas that I would like to stay in focus, and now I can add additional pins to set the blur. So I'd like this area here to be blurred, and I could increase the amount of blur, and I think I would probably do that because I don't need you to see whatever that shape is in the front. I would also like to blur this area in the back. Maybe move that over a little. And then I could add as many pins as are needed. Now I might need to add a few in order to get the right blend effect that I'm looking for, but that's okay. These can all be selectively applied and adjusted, as many as you need. So I'll put another one over here and increase it, and I might need another one up top. And for that matter, I might also want to put a pin right on the tail of the plane, and even though it's close to the tail of the plane, the rest of the stuff behind will be blurred out. I could also put another pin right here to blur those areas. And maybe another guy over here. Maybe a couple up in the sky to make sure that those areas are nice and blurry. And you can toggle the preview on and off to make sure that you have it looking the way you want it. When you're finished, you could come in and adjust what's called the bokeh, which is blur effects. You can turn bokeh on and off with this checkbox. And what it really means is whether or not any halation or bright lights will turn into like circular shapes and brighten. So you'd have to turn the bokeh on by using this slider. And you can see that there's a sun glare up at the top and a glare on the building in the mid-range area and also a glare in the foreground. And you could adjust the bokeh color so that would intensify the color. It's like changing the saturation. And then you could also adjust the light range of the bokeh. So this particular image isn't a very good one to test bokeh on, but it would be if you were taking maybe a shot at night with some lights off in the distance and you can have some nice circular shapes going. So also with the blur, you can adjust any selected pin by using this slider here. And when you have everything ready to go, click OK. Now remember, this is a destructive edit, so if you wanted to retain your original, you would convert your image into a smart object before, but I can toggle undo the way it was before, the way it is after, to compare and see how I like them. Let's move over and talk about iris blur. Iris blur is similar in that um, you'll be dealing with pins. I'm just going to duplicate this layer so we can toggle between the before and after. And we have these cute little otters here, and if we select Filter, Blur, Iris, we can modify the focus to be just on the otters and not so much on the background, which was already a little bit blurred, but not quite enough. You can increase or decrease the size of the iris, and if you click right here on this little square, you can go between a rounded rectangle shape and an oval shape. The shape can be opened and closed, and these little markers here can be slide, uh, you can slide them in and out to set the area for the blur. And then just like before, you can increase or decrease the blur outside the circular area. And uh, if you need to reposition, just click and drag right in the center. 
So I might do something like that and then increase the blur so that the focus is really on those cute little critters. Like before, uh, you can modify the center point of your iris on the slider here. You could also play around with the bokeh. And usually you know, I'll slide it all the way to the right to see if there are any shapes that I think would look good if we did add a bokeh. But because this was a daylight shot, it sort of doesn't make sense to add any of that unless we had direct sunlight. So I'd probably leave it something like this. And when I'm finished, click OK. Again, this is a destructive edit. So if you're not working on a duplicate copy of your original, make sure you convert your layer into a smart object beforehand. So here's the way it was before, and here's the way it is after. The last option is tilt shift, which really makes your image look like it's a miniature, like a little teeny tiny town that you're looking down on, some kind of diorama. And uh, it's never been easier than it is now, I tell you. Here's an example of an image, and the types of images that work best are ones where you're shooting down from sort of a high vantage point onto the subject matter. Like before, head into the Filter menu, choose Blur, and this time choose Tilt Shift, and automatically this whole sliding apparatus will appear on top of your image. You can adjust the amount of blur on the top and on the bottom, you could also increase or decrease the size of the in-focus area, and then you can reposition the area of focus. So I might want this row, this line of boats to be in focus, but nothing below it, or maybe just nudge it down slightly more. And then I can play around with this, like I really want to have most of that blurred out, like so. And then here's the increase or the decrease of the blur. You could also do, in this case symmetric distortion which will make the top and bottom even and really it depends on your image and how you've adjusted all these little sliders whether or not you like it the way it is with or without symmetric distortion. Again you could play around with the bokeh. Now this is a sunlight shot. You can see what's happening to the light. It's turning into these nice little circles. So maybe just a little bit would give this more of a realistic look. And then you could also change the color and intensity of the bokeh so it almost looks like lens flare. I would probably leave it down or completely off. And then if you wanted to, you could adjust the light range up or down. Don't want to have any of that halation behind the tree in the sky. So I'd probably leave it somewhere around here. But you could also modify the slider in the opposite direction. And when you have everything the way you like it, click OK. And there you have it. Looks like a little miniature town. Here's another example just so you can see what you can do. There's the before, there's the after, another one before, and another one after.